Hello, my name is Shadley, and welcome back to another episode of Valhalla Vanguard in our World of War X. And in previous episode, we did actually manage to get the Magnetoplasma try and finally research, as so you probably figured from the name of the last episode. But we have now gotten some of the engines designed, or well, outlined for what we need, and I think we're gonna start with the longboat plasma drive and put on 10 research labs on getting these engines done quickly. I think that's going to be plenty. Then I think what we're going to do next is get unsung so we can start producing those with pretty good engines. Then I think we're going to have to get the... We're going to get the commercial engines in between there because those are quick ones and then we're going to get the main battle engine, I suppose. Which we did increase the size a little bit, which of course means that if we lose one engine then the speed is going to drop quite dramatically. But they should be able to take quite a bit of hits. And the fact that they are more fuel efficient is going to help in the long run. Now then. Another thing that I should probably start getting is one of these, or some of these squadron jump radius and sizes. So we can actually jump multiple ships away from the jump point itself. Just to give us a little bit of time. And we are going to get the civilian economy in May. And in February we're going to get the ordnance product. Actually we don't have anything else queued up for the missile researcher. What we might want to do actually is start to get some of the other stuff. Some beam fire, maybe rail guns or something like that. Start getting some of these. They are fairly cheap. We'll get two of those techs at least. So we can get some railguns uh, ready for when we start doing our like jump point preacher. And we might also consider, so it's something that has been suggested to me, is maybe making some, for example, railgun platforms or something like that. They will be able to shoot down incoming enemy missiles. So fairly well if there's plenty of them and they will be cheap to make. So I think I might do some of those. Or well, some sort of platform, defensive platforms at least, is something that I've been thinking. So that is something that we will do. Now is there anything... I think we'll go with these, that's plenty to get going for a little while. And the civilian economy, I don't know if we've got anything queued up for that research. I don't think we do. Well, let's go ahead. Construction practical. Fighter production rate might be useful. I think we're going to get the small jump gate construction module now. So we can then start designing the jump gate construction. So we can get the jump gates between or from Valhalla all the way to Mimir. That's just gonna let the civilians do a little bit, and that is gonna earn us a bit of money because we are lacking it quite a bit. But anyway, I think we can get going again. If we go back to Moonin, let's have a look. We're still pretty far away, which is a bit unfortunate. I'll get us to the 6th of January and then start skipping in 5 day increments again. I mean, the freighter is moving, it just has a long way to go. But yeah, we'll probably drop... at least some fuel for the Explorer. I'm not sure how much we'll drop in total, but we'll see. Assuming that we can actually get there without getting intercepted by the enemy, although the distances are so large that I don't think they'll be able to spot us over here. Somehow they managed to spot us using that jump point, which is why they are guarding it. Team skill for the diplomatic team has increased once again. That's good. And one thing that is probably good to remind is that I do record most of these episode, episodes quite a bit beforehand, so 
even when there's uh, comments, uh, tips and tricks, um, I might not be responding those immediately in terms of the gameplay here. Okay, so the ship has been refitted, the Explorer 4, that's good. Now the question is, do I want to ex... <laughs> hmm... We don't have the new engines yet, but we might as well start setting up the research, or the design for the Longboat 4. So we'll copy the design, rename this to Longboat 4, and we can then replace the engines. with the bigger one once we have that available and we can then also actually is there new armor no not yet we are researching it though so that's good we do have the thermal sensors over there which are fairly small but they will at least give us a little bit of vision if need be also with the better engines we don't need as much fuel maybe lower down to one million roughly speaking so we'll see how long I mean we're not going to touch this too much right now, but later on. And that should give us a decent bit of engine power. All the speed to move. I mean, it doesn't increase the speed as much as it could. But I think uh, for something that is going to be traveling a lot, the fuel efficiency is a bit more important than the speed. But we could send in the... Hmm. Actually, that's an option. We could take the Explorer 4, we could send it through Nastrand to go to Gunnar, because we know that there's two jump points in Gunnar. We could go through one of them. So let's uh, select the Explorer 4. We may need to refuel. Actually, let's quickly check. There's still 3.7 million liters of fuel here, so that's good. So the Explorer 4, which has just been re... No, that's right. and not Explorer. So this one. A bit long fuel. I don't think it's going to be the end of the world. The good, you can have that. Hmm... That might be a problem, though. Hmm. So I'm just thinking is when it runs low on fuel, which it will, it will then try to return the quickest way back, most likely. And there's going to be enemies in the way. Oh, actually. That might not be the quickest way through Muni, instead going back to the jump point there. Yeah, it might be doable, maybe. But we'll give them orders to do the surveys at least. And if it gets destroyed then we can just build a new one later on. It's not the end of the world, it's a waste of resources of course, but I think we can live with that to some degree. So we'll refuel at the whalers. Then go through Munin, go to Gunnar, and then we'll go through the jump point one, I suppose. Uh, we'll see what we find. Now I wonder, we could actually check that soon. The freighter, how far away are you from... Ah, still 90 days away. But it hasn't actually used all that much of its fuel, in all honesty, so it should not have a problem returning from... after giving... I don't know... Ooh! We found another... Nebula? Is there anything in here, is the question. There's two planets and one moon. Not very much. I thought I... Oh, right, you have those survey located. Let's uh, remove all the orders. And... That, and then have the some locations. It doesn't seem very big. So that's good. 
Let's actually have a look. Refresh the map data. So we can move it up. Uh, I suppose we could move it up there. Line up, save positions. That's going to be a nebula. I mean, it might not actually be true for, but it doesn't matter. If we say that's the truth, then it's the truth for now. Let's actually go forward a smaller increment so it gets the new orders. Now, it's probably going to take a while without any extra armor, so hmm, that may prove to be a bit of a challenge. Now, actually, let's have a not that the colony costs. Um, hmm, one of them is not colonizable at all. And the moon isn't colonizable, that's because of very low gravity. And this one that is colonizable probably has, yeah, it's a bit toasty. Almost 700 degrees there on the surface. So, yeah, that's a bit of a challenge. Let's have a fair bit of pressure by the looks of it. Nitrogen dioxide, ooh. That's, uh. Yeah, okay, so it has a lot of atmosphere there, and over here there's also a huge amount of pressure, but. This place doesn't seem like. Other than maybe some automated mines, potentially, I don't think it's gonna be all that valuable for us. But it might have some decent jump points. Aha, uh the -huh. uh, Tuck has completed orders in Humir. Let's jump back there. Because I know that there are ships at the other task group. Do you still have a decent bit of fuel? I think I am going to grab. Uh, to grab another ship. No, 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 no. Uh, task groups. Harvesters. Oh, I didn't realize there's another whaler here. Might as well send it to the whaling fleet of uh, Mir. So we'll grab that. We're going to take that to Alta, actually. And Strand, Standard Transit, Alta. So we'll move to the. I'll actually do it this way. Move there. Then release tractor ships. And then move back to Mir and to Valhalla. Wait there, and then the whaler over here will detach you, and you'll just go into the whaling fleet, move to, and join. And that should work. Just have it completed on Gunnar C2 Moon 2. Ooh, that sounds pretty promising. So they found a deposit of uh, 7.8 million tons of uranium, excessively 0.8 on the moon there. Holy crap. Okay. Let's have a look. Well, I don't remember what else they had there, but we can check that. So that was Moon 2. So it has a lot of uranium and corundium. Okay. I mean, in terms of numbers, those are not the biggest ones, but in terms of accessibilities, the total accessibilities are still rather low. If we ever need a lot of uranium, we could easily mine that one. So let's disband the team. Now, I forget, did we have anything... I suppose we could start serving more of these places. Is this one... that one already has the team. And that one does not. So we'll send the team over here. Okay, those five. Create a team there. I forget what was. Oh, right, this has a lot of uranium and neutronium. Maybe we could find some good accessibilities here, that would be nice. 
I mean, he has a decent one. It's 2.2 .2 right now, so it's not the end of the world, but it's still not necessarily entirely worth it. Right, we should be getting the research done pretty soon. There we go, we got the engine for the longboats down. We built another freighter. And we're having a bit of fuel shortage for produ producing missiles right now, but that's going to be fixed soon. Or it's not going to be a problem for long. And we started researching the unsung engines. Right, but now we can go in and switch the engine over here. I forget how we switch the jump drive. I don't think we've actually increased the efficiency of those, so there's not much to do with that. Right, but that one. So it does increase the size a little bit, but we're going to get one of those large fuel tanks. It still has a lot longer range. 200 billion actually. Even though we took away, well we didn't actually take all that much away with the fuel. It's one and a half million right now. We could technically put in another tiny fuel storage there if we wanted to. It has a long maintenance life that's for sure. Although if we have a, compare it to the this one, it actually has a smaller maintenance life. And that's something to keep in mind, but it's still pretty good. Little points, hold on, that's 700. It's actually a tiny bit cheaper to make right now. Hmm, interesting. And the range is more than doubled. Now we can still wait for the armor to be renewed and we might be able to fit in a tiny bit of something in there still. But this is certainly a lot better. Right, and it has the exact 3000 kilometers per second speed. Now if we could only <laughs> shrink down the jump drive a little bit in size, that'd be nice. Because if I remember correctly, that does take a lot of room. Um, well, it's 17 hull size, it's not that huge in all in all, but it's still pretty large. With the next level we could actually take about four and a half of the hull size away. Or take uh, four would be probably because you don't get half a hull size jump drives. But yeah, it would be cheaper already and with the better armor and all that. Yeah, this seems pretty good. It has still a pretty long deployment time, but that's not really an issue. And the fact that it has such a huge fuel tank, it will probably run out of deployment time first, rather than fuel or maintenance points. But yeah, I'm actually pretty happy with that already. Right, so we did start the research on the unsung engine, so we'll get that one rather soon, I believe. Not immediately, but in about a month. And we got the ordnance production research, we started researching the railgun. So Explorer 2 and Explorer 5, 6 and 7 are still here. Let's actually have a look. How far away in Moonin are they? They are still about two months away, I think. Oh, I forgot to set the freighters that we have into bringing in more infrastructure to Njord, because that would be useful. Also, how much have we actually done? We've done a little bit of work on getting the oxygen there, but before it goes above the threshold of the racial values, it will still be the, the colony cost of two. Which is a little bit unfortunate. 
but at least we get gotten started on that. But yeah, I think uh, setting the I don't know the three or three is probably three right now. Yeah, seems like it. So Valhalla, you're gonna pick up uh, infrastructure. You're gonna be bringing twenty per trip. You can go to Nastrand. You can probably refuel at the task group actually. Uh, refuel from target fleet. Then go to Alter. Go to Njord. Uh, unload infrastructure. And then back through Nestrand and Humira. I'm going to move them to Valhalla and then do the repeat. Now, how many do we want to take there? If it's 20 per trip. For 500, it would be 25 times. Yeah, I think we're going to repeat it 24 times, so it's going to be 25 times all in all. So we're going to get started with that. Right, so we should be getting the unsung engine soon, I hope. Oh, right, the whaler has joined the whaling fleet. Let's have a look. How much do they produce now? Also, we can probably get rid of this task group. Because it's empty. So, Hamir, they are producing a bit over 15 million. I'm not sure if they've actually... It did increase, it did. It was 14.9 uh, or something like that previously. It does track. I have to think for a moment there, but yeah, we are producing a decent bit of fuel there. We have 2 million litres over there, which is not all that much. But it will have to do for now. Let's see, we are getting closer to the Explorer there, so that's good. Unrest is increasing and decreasing because of the garrison in there. They don't actually need protection level right now, but eventually they will. Research completed on the Unsung Engine, started on the Magnesium Plasma Drive, the commercial one. Right, so let's have a look. The Unsung... We can get rid of these two and put in the that engine. It goes exactly 10 whole size. It still has a little bit spare bears, but that's fine. Speed of 16,000 kilometers per second. Now that's almost as quick as some of our missiles, of course, oh that reminds me, I need to design the missile engines again. That's something that I need to do. Right, and... Yeah, the total power up is, is actually a bit extra. But I don't think I'll be able to lower that enough. So it actually matter. Well, no, I think this is decent. It has nine hours of of uh, power, 0.6 billion kilometers range. I think this is honestly good enough for me. Now the deployment time. Technically, we could lower that even still, but I don't think we need to. So I think these unsungs are now ready. The build point is a bit high. It takes over 100 points to actually build one of these. On the other hand, we don't have the hangar space for them yet either. But we're going to now select Rommel. And fighters, let's make sure that we add in these. So we can have... Six unsungs per Rommel. And I think that's a decent one. Hold on, let's have a look. Oh right, we just have three hangar decks, that's fine. That's perfectly fine. 
Now we might want to get some things for this still, but right now it's not really necessary. We can lower the amount of fuel later on. But yeah, we can keep that on. I think, hold on, we did have the hangar... Oh, I could swear that we had the PDC somewhere. Fighter brace, there you are. So we should probably start building these. These can have up to 10 of unsungs each, or whatever plane is needed. It's going to cost a fair bit, but yeah, we might want to build, I don't know, five of these or something like that to get ourselves a little bit hangar space so we can start building the unsungs already. And then once we get our carriers up, then we can start using them. Of course, they won't be useful right now necessarily, but later on, I'm pretty sure that we can use them a fair bit. So let's put in... Each one of them has a ten... Capacity. We built six. That's going to be enough for ten carriers worth of capacity. And put that up to the queue there. I mean, it's going to take a while before we get to that, but it will be fine. But unfortunately, we are actually out of time for this episode. So if you enjoyed this, please like, comment, subscribe if you haven't already. Also, check out the links down below in the description. But other than that, thank you very much for watching. And until next time, bye bye.